we are recording. All right. Hi, everyone. Hey, everybody. Me and Michelle are back for episode three. Um, you might hear some planes in the background, some lawnmowers in the background, uh, but we're going to deal with it and hopefully it won't be too distracting. Um, so today we actually are just going to focus on two, uh, two or, or the questions from two people, Yolanda and Diane, who submitted these in the last one or two weeks and they are such great questions, like some really big questions and some really technical questions that we feel like we could put a good put a good show together and just out of these questions so the first one is yolanda asked what steps am i taking to make ten thousand dollars a month in passive income because i've shared that that is my goal right now i want to make i want to get my business to ten thousand dollars a month of passive income <clears throat> and she was saying how are you doing that i want to do that what are the steps you're taking and i just broke it down into the key things and I have my notes here so I'm going to be looking down um, and the first step is to have products you believe in so whether that is one main product that's like your membership um, I work with Carrie Green and she just has her one product that she always focuses on and that has been her winner uh, which is her members membership the members club uh, both Carrie uh, both Amy and I work with Carrie in the members club and, or, you know, you might be like me and want to have kind of like a set of products where I have the life binder and then I have the passive income with printables course and then I have my SOS club, which is a membership. So it's kind of like an entry level product that's 20 to $40, uh, a midway product that is $147 and then a membership product, which is $10 a month. Which are all so, part of the same family also. Yes. They all kind of like feed each other. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So with those products, I can see how I can take people from the life binder to the course, to the club, and just take them on this journey. And I really love the concept of a customer journey. Like your products can help create this customer journey where they come in because they bought that $20 thing, but eventually they become a lifelong member of your, your, your subscription club or your members club. And so I'm, my real reason for wanting to make $10,000 a month in passive income is because I just feel like I'm at a stage in my business where I should be thinking in this way. I should be looking at how am I, how am I taking people from point A to the top of the mountain? How am I creating a journey instead of just, you know, doing stuff? And the, the, so having products you believe in is first and foremost, it did take me a while to get to this point where I have these products um, and each one kind of organically grew out of what I was passionate about. And sometimes I was more excited about what I was doing than other times. And that meant that I needed to tweak it. And Amy knows like the SOS club I've been through, I've had this subscription service for three years. I started it where, where it was just, pay $5 a month and I'll send you four printables a month. And it was doing well, but I was never really passionate about it enough to really grow it. And I've contemplated setting it down, but I just couldn't get myself to do it. And I realized that I wanted to make this my golden egg product <laughs> uh, of sorts where this, this needed to be something more meaningful than just four printables a month. This needed to be something that really felt like the pinnacle of the secret house society community. And I'm still working on it. Like when I, when I, when I launched the new version of it in January, I didn't know that I was about to go into first trimester <laughs> pregnancy world. <laughs> and so that was like, okay, well, I'm dealing with all these mood swings and trying to maintain this, members club which I kept, I keep very very simple but even then it was like you have to be excited about what you're doing in order to keep moving forward to the next level and I was just like I just am going to do the bare minimum and you know this is life right now and I'll see what happens and now I'm back to having energy and looking at it again but so basically I'm just trying to see if I can hit ten thousand dollars a month before my energy disappears again <laughs> before baby comes 
yeah, it's, uh, Amy's always asked me, so how are you feeling right now? And I'm like, I'm doing good, feeling good, taking more naps, but I'm, you know, getting things done because yeah, I just remember. Is, so guys, Michelle is insanely productive right now. She says she's taking a lot of naps. And I think that we can learn something from this because she naps and then she just gets loads of stuff done and then takes another nap. Yeah. I think we should be, we should be doing this. I take like two naps a day. So <laughs> yeah. I don't try to fight it. Like everybody's also been saying like, wow, you're getting so much done. So I mean, there's something to it. I, think. I have a, an undeniable deadline called maternity leave. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but anyway, so, you know, that's my little spiel about having products you believe in, uh, letting, letting it, that take time to put together you're just not throwing things together like okay i need a 20 dollar product and i need a course and i need a membership and you know unless you're really passionate about those things you're not going to sustain them and grow them and stick to them and make them valuable enough where people want to be a part of them and people want to tell their friends about them and people want to say or people experience that you change your, their life through them so that stuff doesn't happen overnight it takes time it took me time to make that life binder because it was the culmination of experiences that I had for two years previous. It took time for me to make the printables course because it was the culmination of my experiences selling the life binder and, and becoming a su success with that. And it took time to get the SOS club to where it is now because I had to become a, this, this person who wasn't just a, uh, here are four printables a month person, but a person who's like, I'll take you on a journey to take 100% responsibility for your life. All of that took time. Um, and, and if I can add something here, sometimes, yeah, um, and this is a real relief to hear you talking through this journey of developing these products and coming up with the ideas and then figuring out, ah, this isn't quite the right version of this idea. Okay, so we're going to tweak it again. And I think sometimes, in the beginning, or at least I certainly felt, I had to sit down and make a plan and have everything fleshed out, know exactly what my low price product is gonna be and then my bigger product and then what's the mm -hmm. massive product and all of this kind of stuff. And that's really hard to work out when you're just starting out and really you just need to experiment, right? Exactly, mm -hmm. and it comes back to taking the pressure off. Mm -hmm. and just giving yourself time like when Amy and I started this uh, this show that we're doing right now on episode three you know the, the first thing I said was okay we'll see what comes of it in 18 months <laughs> like I'm already giving it that 18 month timeline uh, I'm not gonna judge it I'm not gonna be like, like okay how many views are we getting okay is it working I'm just gonna be like I'm going to do it the way I've done everything else. Just do it and keep on doing it and see where, it, where it's at in 18 months because I know that because we are doing something valuable and being consistent at it, it is going to succeed. I don't need to worry about stats and all that stuff. <clears throat> at least that's how I've, how I've gotten this far. So why, why break what's working? <laughs> and I'm trying out this approach because my <laughs> approach would normally be okay, I need to have this all planned out and I need to know what I'm going to say. I need to script everything. I need to have, like I was telling Michelle before we started the show, I was like, but I don't, I need to have better skin first. I would like to grow out my hair a little bit. Maybe, I don't know, my teeth aren't straight. I can't be on camera. You know, like all these crazy um, nonsense things. So if it was just up to me, you wouldn't be seeing this show. <laughs> yeah, and, and we would we just like I collect the questions as they come in. I put them in Basecamp, which is a project management system. And then ten minutes before Amy and I come on to record, I'll write down what we'll cover. Uh, Amy and I will talk about it for five minutes, and then we'll hit record. It's no it's no big deal. I feel like stop making everything a big deal and just do create, get stuff out there, and 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 do it consistently. Um, and if you don't feel passionate about it, then it's not, and well, there, you, we will have moments where you feel like you're not passionate about something, but you know that there's something there and you stick to it. But sometimes you just got to let 
if you're in like this empty space where nothing is really sticking out to you and you're not really excited about anything, you know, let that space be empty. That's a season of life and business too. I was telling Amy, I've gone a year without blogging or putting anything up on my blog really, because I just wanted to let the, the next, the next stage of whatever I needed to focus on come in instead of trying, instead of putting things out there that were just, you know, I'm putting out something, you know, mm. and it's quality. I, I, creating content. Yeah. I'm quality over quantity. So once I had this idea with, to do this show with Amy, it's like, okay, now I know what I need to do and we're doing it every week. So, <laughs> so that's part of the process too. It's like just knowing how to work with your energy, trusting your intuition, not panicking if you don't have three products right now and just letting things take the time they take. Um, <clears throat> so having products you believe in the next step. Okay. Now you can hear the bushwhacker. Um, Amy, let me know if you can hear it. Um, the next, hear it actually. okay, good. <clears throat> the next step is to do the math. So often we're like, mm -hmm. I want to make ten thousand dollars a month. I want to make five thousand dollars a month, but we never, or or not even a month, a year. I want to make a hundred thousand dollars a year, and we never do the math of that. We never break down. Okay, if you want to make a hundred thousand dollars a year, how much is that per month? Okay, if you want to make $8,000 a month, how much is that per day if you're like selling daily instead of launching? And I remember, because I used to clean houses and babysit, and in my head, I'd be building this online business empire. And I just remember one day I was cleaning someone's house, and I just realized, because I, I would always write down, you know, my goal to, to make this much money, my goal to make that much money. And I realized, how much money do I need to make per month in order to reach a hundred thousand dollars per year? And I just was surprised that I'd never did the math. Like Amy, have you ever done that math? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a figure in my head, like yeah, hundred thousand. A hundred thousand. So good to dream about it. But I, I mean, it's roughly what, like, just under ten k, like maybe eight point something a year. A, a eight eight thousand something. Per, per month. Um, and then when you finally break that down, you do the math and break it down to how much it would be per month. Then you could look at, okay, this is how much I need to bake per quarter. This is how much I need to make per month. And depending on if you're selling something with launches or selling something just on a consistent daily basis, like maybe you have an Etsy store, then you then you would be able to look at your numbers even more okay if i need to make eight thousand dollars this month and i have three products how much do i need to sell of product one product two product three to equal that eight thousand something per month which actually when you do that it's not so scary like i think exactly a hundred thousand a year seems like quite a lofty thing especially when you're starting out but if we're looking so i just did the math on my calculator because mm -hmm. I don't do maths anymore in my brain. <laughs> yeah. Um, so a hundred K divided by 12, we're looking at 8.33 K mm -hmm. a month, which mm -hmm. is just over two grand a week, which sounds mm -hmm. like a lot right now in the beginning, but actually there, there are ways for us to build that up over the course of a few years, you know? Mm -hmm. Exactly. And when you, when you have, like for me, I have three key products, and I can look at, okay, $10,000 in passive income with my passive income products. I'm not, I'm not counting client income. I'm counting just passive income. Um, how much would I need to sell of my life binder? How much would I need to sell of my course? How many members do I need to have in my club for that to equal in total that $10,000 a month? And once you break that down, then you can see the, the numbers you know, the number of sales and be like, okay, what kind of, what do I need to do to reach that number of sales on Etsy? What do I need to do to reach that number of sales for my course? And that's when your brain can start going to work. Because if you're just thinking 10,000, 10,000, your brain doesn't have anything to work on versus if you're like, I need to sell 80 life finders this month, your brain can start working. Okay. That's not 
too big. 80 sounds much more doable than 10,000. Right. And I can work on 80. Uh, I remember when I first, so, first launched my Life Finder, I announced it to my email list, which wasn't very big, but that first month I made a thousand dollars in sales. And that was at that time I was like making like almost no money online. I was like only making a thousand dollars a month online and um, to make an extra thousand just from this passive income product was amazing. And I mean, yeah, I, you, just to, you just double your income right there from, yeah. from making the most of this product that month. Yeah, amazing. Exactly. So I was making a thousand a month from client income online. And then to make a thousand from passive income, I was like, wow, okay, how do I do this next month? And I realized I can't just tell my email list about it again. I have to find new people to sell this to. And that's where I, when I turned to Pinterest. But even like back then, I was. I was a thousand a month mindset. And so I realized I needed to, I needed to give my brain something to work with. And a thousand felt like a lot back then. So I broke that down. Okay. I have a $20 product. How many $20 products do I need to sell to reach a thousand dollars again this month? And I realized it was only 50, 50. So 50 felt a lot better than a thousand <laughs> instead yeah. of focusing on a thousand i focused on 50 50 sales versus a thousand dollars and can, and then i broke it down again okay how many sales per day is that and i was like only one to two sales a day which for is the month. doable <laughs> which is exactly so much better than thinking like oh my god how am i going to make that thousand pounds exactly so i wasn't thinking how am I going to make a thousand? How am I going to make a thousand? I was thinking, how can I sell one to two? How can I sell one to two? Yeah. And I just, and then I broke it down to, I'll do one thing every day to market this product on Pinterest. And then boom, I made a thousand dollars again. And then again and again and again, and it went up. So that is, you know, my journey to, from being like, how am I going to make a thousand to now being like, okay, how am I going to make 10,000? So that, those are, those are two points. Do the math, have products you believe in. And then, yes, you can make a plan. So I will make a plan. I'll be like, okay, $10,000 a month. This is how much I need to sell of this, this, and this. this is, these are the things I can do. I'll bullet point all the things I can do for each product to get it to be more uh, successful in sales. But then I'll let it go. I'll surrender. I'll detach myself from actually making that goal because – the more desperate you are about your goal, the more you push it away from you. Desperation pushes what you want away from you. Um, so I'll, I'll just, I literally just surrender. I detach myself from it. I don't, I don't really care to hit this goal. I just, I just, this is just how I set goals. Like, okay, it would be nice to do this and my brain's already working on it and it's working on it so much more because I'm detached. Versus if I was desperate and I had all this anxiety around it, my brain would shut off. And I need my brain to go to work for me. I need my intuition to be sending me ideas. And every single day I will get ideas like, oh, I can do this. Oh, I can do that. And I'll, I'll, I'll put those ideas in one place. So that way I always have something to do to move my business forward without thinking, oh my goodness, what am I going to do? I don't know what to do. Um, and then we're not creative when we're fearful. When we're fearing mm -hmm. that it's not going to happen, fearing that like, oh, I don't, I, can I actually do this or not? And, you know, we need to be in that relaxed, creative state in order to come up with our ideas. And you just making that plan, fleshing it out and creating it has set the intention. So mm -hmm. then from that place, you can just sort of go about your business, but without realizing it, you'll be doing all the things that you need to do in order to make it work. Exactly. Mm. Yes. Desperation pushes what you want away from you. So detach. Yes, way, like, it's so, so sorry. I mean, go ahead. <laughs> one more thing to add here. Like this conversation, sometimes in the middle of these conversations, I catch myself thinking like, oh, this is so radically different from what I grew up knowing, <laughs> thinking, you know, like if, if anyone were to hear me saying like, yeah, just, just detach. It's fine gonna it's gonna come it's like <laughs> you know but but actually this is a part of the process too it's like a 
part of the reason why maybe we haven't achieved this up until now is this energy of like tight, constricted fear that it's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And it's like, you know, being desperate, criticizing yourself, being hard on yourself. Has it been working for you? No. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> So why keep doing it? You know, the whole yeah. Einstein thing, if you keep doing the same thing and re expect a different result, it's insane. Mm -hmm. And if I look at the biggest successes that I've had, they haven't come from a place of desperation. They came from a place of creativity and experimenting and I don't know if this will work, let's try it. And just, you know, that energy that I tapped into when I read Seth Godin's Poke the Box, which I talked a little bit about in episode two, um, where it's this childlike enthusiasm around life, doing things with your life, not doing things in terms of, does this fit into my career path, or will this work, or am I going to be able to sell this? It's like letting go of that and just doing things for the sake of seeing what will happen, not seeing if it will work. And that has served me so, so well. Um, um, may I ask a question? So it, it's, it's looking like, so guys, we're, we're sort of learning and improvising in this process. And I can see that we're coming up to half an hour soon within the next 10 minutes. So I'm wondering whether we should rather focus on one question and really do that well mm -hmm. per week. What do you think? Um, um, this, is really, this is a, it's, it's really important to hear. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if we come up to 30, okay. Um, Amy and my goal is to do 30 minutes and eat. And I've had a couple people say, I love it when you talk for like an hour. Which is okay. awesome. It was just awesome to hear, but at the same time, Amy and I are in the middle of our work week and we just want to keep these quick <laughs> so yeah. that we keep doing them. Um, so if we, when we come up to 30 minutes, we'll see where we're at and, and wrap it up. Okay. Uh, and so I, I have one, one more question later. about this yeah. um, passive income. So we've, we've gone over the process of creating the passive income, laying out the plan and having the products in place. Um, there's one piece which I usually come up against when it comes to passive income and it's like this guilt around should it be am I allowed to make income passively like of course yes many people do but also it's like well but you know my friends and family are working long long hours to make this money and why should I be allowed to make ten thousand dollars of income a month from a few products that I like, you know, that I enjoyed making. How can that be? I mean, did you come up against any of that stuff? Um, I, I definitely had to mentally get into that passive income state of mind, you know, step by step. It wasn't just like, ooh, passive income, that's a good idea, I'm gonna do it. Yeah. It was, it was something that I had to realize was sort of like, not only my responsibility, but everybody's respons responsibility. Mm, it's our I responsibility, got, amazing. Yeah, I got to a point where I was, because you know, everyone has experiences with money and it being this hard negative thing and you know, hearing stories around, you know, money's hard to make or money doesn't grow on trees or what are you doing? Don't you know that costs money? You know, all these negative things. And it's like one knowing that my, I don't want my life to be dictated in that way. And people shouldn't have to keep living that way when we live in a time where passive income is possible for everyone. And because it's so possible, it is our responsibility. And I, I'm so passionate about it because I'll talk about how, you know, the mom is going to work, the dad is going to work, there's no one left to send to work, but there's still not enough money. So now what? And I believe the answer is passive income. And because we are able to create this in our life through so many different ways, we, and because we know that trading hours for dollars does not work, and because, you know, family is the most important thing, quality time is the most important thing, 
you know, it's, it's just like you have to be, you get to a point where it's like, this is not an option. This is a responsibility. And I just, like, I just feel, I, I feel so passionate about it. I made a core, I made a, like a mini class called how to make money blogging. And basically I'm just telling people, trying to get people to realize that passive income is not an option. You have to take this seriously. You know, you know, I'm not really teaching you how to blog. I'm teaching you how to have a passive income mindset because that's what is core to all of this. Yes. Um, and I, and I'm working on passive income required a shift in my mindset from, from working on things that were urgent to working on things that are important. Because when you work on something that's passive income, it's not going to pay you right away. Just because you yeah. created a product doesn't mean you're going to start making money. But you might have a client where if you, if you do the project, you'll get the paycheck. Or if you go to your job at the end of two weeks, you'll get the paycheck. Yeah. Passive income requires a completely different mindset where you let go of expecting a paycheck to appear. And you do things because it, you, you work on it because it's sig a significant, important part of a bigger picture, not because you're going to get a paycheck. Um, and, and that requires a complete mindset shift because we've grown up in a paycheck society where it's like, do the work, get paid, do the work, get paid. If you're working on something that's passive income, you're doing the work, 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 doing the work and then get paid. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. And, and allowing yourself to go to scale back a little bit, even sometimes mm -hmm. this is something that I'm working on right now is like, okay, well, there's always things that I can be doing for clients, right? There's always mm -hmm. something, um, especially clients who are doing amazing things like our clients. So like I could be doing everything all the time and just keep mm -hmm. going, but making time for myself and going like, okay, I'm going to just scale back a little bit. And yes, it's not going to end up in immediate income, but I need to also invest that time in, as you said, the important pieces, mm -hmm. puzzle pieces of this bigger picture, which are not mm -hmm. going to yield income right away, but I have to start working on them now because you know, a mm -hmm. year is going to come anyway. At the end of the next year, it's going to come anyway. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to look back and go like, oh crap, I should have, I should have worked on this just an hour exactly. a day or something, you know? Yeah. And, and I'm passionate about letting time work for you. Um, instead of thinking, and that, that's part of passive income mindset or compound growth or investing in real estate or investing in anything is you have, you're letting time work for you just because you put something, something up on Pinterest doesn't mean tomorrow you're going to be making sales. You have to factor in the component of time. It's your energy plus time that equals result. It's not, how do I make this happen now? Or I just put up my product or my store or my Pinterest pin yesterday, how come I'm not getting results now? It's like, because time is part of the whole equation. It's energy plus time equals results. And, you know, consistent energy, putting your energy in consistently. And I was going to say something. Um, oh, yeah. When I was working on my life binder, I realized I had to step out of client mindset into passive income mindset. I had to go from this is urgent. I had deadlines. Someone's expected me to get this done to no one is expecting me to create this life minder. No what I have no deadlines other than the ones I give myself. No, I have no reason to actually get this done for anything yes. or anyone, <laughs> but I'm going, I'm, tr I'm going to treat this like it's m just as important, if not more important than yeah. my client work or my job. And that, that is the shift you have to make because otherwise you're, you're, you're going to go year after year and realize you never created something that could, that could produce passive income. Um, and that's uncomfortable by the way, that is yeah. never going to feel like, Oh yeah. Easy shift. I'm there now. Like, yes. It does it's, feel it, weird. Because mm -hmm. you're always like, I should be working on the other thing. <laughs> exactly. Right. Like I, I'm, I've started this new schedule. And a friend of mine was like, you need a schedule. So I was like, okay, I'm a rebel, but all right, I'll try. And so I'm, I'm trying to get in like even half an hour a day on my stool. Even if I'm not mm -hmm. feeling inspired at all, I'll, even if it's just like, I need to write down three ideas for this store and, and think mm -hmm. about it, like come up with 
what that could exactly. look like, being excited about it. And that does feel uncomfortable. It feels like, oh, I still have stuff on that to-do list for the other person over there. And it's like, it feels like it's, oh, I'm wasting time or something, but it's mm -hmm. not a waste of time, it's an investment. Yes, and that brings me to my next, my next point on how to create this wonderful passive income is do one, do one thing every day to put energy into your goal. So my goal is $10,000 a month in passive income. And so sometimes that, all that looks is like I did one thing today. And it could be big, it could be small. And yes, like Amy, I spend most of my day working on client stuff, but every single day I am doing at least one thing for my passive income for money that doesn't depend on trading hours for dollars or completing projects. So I printed out calendars for the next four months or, you know, the next three months now, cause I, we just finished June and every day I write down the one thing I did that day for passive income for my goal of $10,000 a month in passive income. And that, one thing can just be what comes to me as this is the thing I want to work on today. Or that one thing can be like, I don't know what I'm going to work on. Let me see what I wrote down when I had ideas of things to do for this goal. And every single, and that is, it's not necessarily me following a plan, even though I've made these plans. Like I said, I detached myself from it. And then I just let what happens in a, on a day to day basis happen. I don't try to fight it. I'm not like, oh, well, I, I'm really excited to like put up the sales page, but that's not part of my plan right now. I'm going to do this other thing. It's like, no, I'll do what I'm inspired to do that day. And are you going to be inspired every single day? No. Sometimes you just do what you have the energy for, which could be uh, posting something on Pinterest <laughs> or, or just even just writing down more ideas. Or maybe you have a day where you realize that you have a bunch of miscellaneous tasks that are just taking your energy and you're like, you know, I'll be more productive on my stuff if I get everything else done today. Yeah. And yeah, I call that and my like freedom all, list, by the way. Your freedom list? I call it a freedom list, yeah. <laughs> like it's, I, I put down freedom list at the top with a big line underneath and then it's all the things that are sort of hanging over my shoulder that are like, you need to get that done. You still haven't got that done. And the mm. more I put them off, the more anxious I feel. So it's like a freedom mm -hmm. list. I tick it off and I'm free and I tick it off and I'm a bit more free and it feels good. That's a great title. Yeah. That's what you are when you're done with that list. You're free. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And sometimes you need to do that in order to get back into that energy of, okay, now I feel like I can get the new bright, shiny ideas done because all the old things that were taking energy are cleared out. Um, and the, yeah, that's it. Uh, my last point was desperation pushes what you want away from you. We already covered that. Mm -hmm. So those, that's literally all I'm doing. There's no real science to it. It's basically just an art. Um, I have no idea if at the end of this period, I will be at $10,000 a month. I just know that I'll be a lot closer than I would have been otherwise. And um, one, one exciting thing that's happening is my husband and I are about to invest in real estate. So in the next couple of weeks, we're going to be investing. So that'll be another form of passive income. So it's not even about me or it's not even about this goal looking or manifesting in the way I expect. It might not be because I have this product, that product, and that product selling in the right amounts to equal 10,000 a month. It might be that we have, you know, other things that end up bringing passive income and income into our life appear. And, you know, whenever you look at your goal and the fact that you achieved it, and then you look at the way you achieved it, you know, hindsight, um, you realize, I could not have predicted that, you know, I, I'm at the goal, but it didn't happen the way I planned. <laughs> it's completely different. So it's not about, um, as Jim Rohn says, set goals for what it will make of you to achieve them. You know, if that is your foundation, then this can be fun. It's not about, I need to hit $10,000. It's about what kind of person will I become if I, 
create that type of business that makes $10,000 a month in passive income. Oh my goodness, I'm going to be someone who has systems. I'm going to be someone who knows how to let people help her. I'm going to be someone who actually created a customer journey that makes sense instead of just kind of being willy nilly with my business. And, you know, it just, that's the real goal. The person I will, I'll become as a result of reaching this goal. So you just need to kind of flip your perspective and make that your why instead of making the money your why, because, you know, t this maintain, maintaining the energy to do this doesn't come because you're excited about the money. It becomes, it comes from being excited about who you're going to be as a result of making that kind of money or reaching that, reaching that goal. Becoming a millionaire as well. He has a quote. Exactly. Like, yes. Become, become a millionaire for what it will make of you to become a millionaire. Yes. So yeah. there you go, everybody. We have now like this amazing zoomed out roadmap. Michelle, you've basically <laughs> just given us the roadmap to get ourselves to six figures a year. And it's not, awesome. a, question of, it's not a question of if either. It's mm. when. Because mm. we're taking we're taking away the fear. We're not doubting that it's going to happen. We just trust that it's going to happen. It could take us a year. It could take us five years and that's okay. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Love that. Thank just you. Focus on what's next. If you're like at the very beginning, then focus on the thousand dollars a month. And that when you, once you hit that, then focus on the $3,000 a month. And and, 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 we, and when your mindset gets to a point where you realize, I can double this. Like I hit that point one time where I was like, I can't remember how much money I was making a month, but I was on a webinar where the guy said how, um, he said that most people don't realize that it's easier, or I, I, don't, I can't remember what he said, but basically he was like, Oh, okay. So most people think that they need all this time to double their income. And I show people how they can do it next week, next month, not next year. Well, and I was like, Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm going to double my income next month. And I just realized, okay, I'm going to, this is my income. I'm going to be making double that by next month. And because I just opened myself up to that possibility, I, saw opportunities to do that. Literally an opportunity came in where the person was like, Oh, I really need more help with this. And I think, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, yeah, you need somebody, you know, th that would be good to get help on. And then I kind of said goodbye. And then I realized, wait a minute, I can do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And I was like, you know what? I can do that for you. And then boom, my income doubled versus if I wasn't thinking in terms of I can double my income, I would have just been like, yeah, you're right. Uh-huh. Conversation over. Bye. But because I was like, okay, I'm going to take this challenge to double my income. I saw the opportunity to double my income. So that's why over and over to get to your goal, you have to be there mentally first. It can't, it doesn't, it, you to be someone that makes $5,000 a month, you have to, or $10,000 a month. Okay, let's say you wanna be a $10,000 a month person, but right now you're a $5,000 a month person. You have to be a $10,000 a month person mentally before for that $10,000 a month to come in. It's not like, okay, once I have a $10,000 a month income, then I can think like a $10,000 a month person. It's like, no, you have to think that way before you get it. And so that, that's why it's all about who you're becoming, because this whole exercise is a manifestation of becoming a, uh, a bigger person. And that's what's really exciting. I love that. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> my mind is blown and I've written down loads and loads and loads of notes. Oh, I want to talk to you guys about this in the Facebook group afterwards. Thank yes, you. let us know much. how you like it. Let us know what questions you have. Um, we didn't get to Diane's questions. We'll get to them next week. But yes. um, we hope you enjoy the show and we'll see you next week. Thanks, guys. Oh, Amy, did you want to say anything else? No. Okay. <laughs> no. I was just like, show's over. 30 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, show's over now. Show's really over now. Okay. 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 Bye. Bye. See you next week. Bye.